So, hi everyone. <clears throat> uh, my name is Peter Lee. I'm, uh, I'm going to be speaking today uh, regarding forum about healing. Uh, welcome everyone. There is about 81 people here. I'm not sure if there are more, more people coming. Um, I don't know if you can see my presentation. Can you? Yeah, okay, great. <clears throat> and um, I know it's a little awkward, but um, if you can maybe turn on your video so I can see your face, I get kind of, you know, I, I like to see people's face so I, so I know who I'm talking to. And uh, this presentation is not going to be like a lecture style, more like, um, um, you know, sharing my own story to you guys in a very personal way. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure we have some Q&A time afterward. Um, and uh, maybe I can finish the presentation within 40 minutes so we can allot some time of Q&A. Um, we're going to be talking about um, the uh, remnants answer to America and the world in need of healing. Um, I am a doctor. I'm a family physician as, as, and as a remnant. I walk the, uh, the walk that Pastor Yu um, has been talking about. My, my voice is low. Hold on. Is my voice too volume low? Oh, speak harder. Can somebody say something? Oh, you're muted. Everyone's muted. <laughs> That's why I couldn't hear anyone. 어, 잘 들려요? 네, 지금 잘 들립니다. Okay, great. 다시 할게요. <웃음> so, um, I guess everyone can hear me. If you if if your volume is too low, just turn the volume. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna share my own story here, and uh, before we go into that, I guess uh, there are plenty of people here, so we're gonna start. Um, let me show you a little video um, about. Uh, describing who I am. And this was a video shown at um, the uh, World Business Conference in Korea. Um, so it kind of shows who I am and also what I do, uh, what my uh, covenant was and, and the vision and my own ministries. So let's play that video clip. 남가주 임마누엘 교회 이용호 장로는 미국 현장에서 치유의 언약을 잡게 됐습니다. 지금 미국에서 일어나는 많은 사회 문제들이나 가정 문제들이 사실은 교회가 힘이 없고 무기력해서 일어나는 문제라고 생각을 해요. 제가 의사로서 현장에 많은 환자들을 보고 또 청소년 현장을 보지만은 그 사람들이 사실상 교회에서 답을 못 얻었어요. 심지어는 교회 안에서 마약을 하는 친구들도 꽤나 많아요. 아, 의대 3년차 그 실습 시간에 아리조나 스카츠데일이라는 곳에 청소년 마약 중독 재활 프로그램이 있었는데 코케인이나 헤로인 심한 마약을 하던 청소년들이 상주를 하면서 재활을 하는 프로그램이었어요. 아이들이 그 하이어 파워라고 전능자를 찾아야 되는 프로그램이거든요. 근데 그 전능자가 뭐 바다가 될 수도 있고 하늘이 될 수도 있고 그런데 그 친구한테는 제가 내 전능자는 예수 그리스도다. 그리고 예수 그리스도께서 내 문제를 해결했다. 그래서 하나님 만나는 길이다. 이런 얘기를 하고 복음 전하고 영접을 했는데 별거 안 했어요. 그냥 읽어보라고 신자의 축복 관련 선고를 제가 적어서 꼭 읽어보라고 해서 줬는데 며칠 안 돼서 너무 많이 바뀐 거예요. 애가. 거기 프로그램 디렉터가 이런 케이스 본 적이 없다고 오히려 다른 아이들을 도우면서 너도 예수 믿어보라고 이제 전도를 하는 케이스가 돼버렸어요. 말씀이 한번딱 들어갔는데 인생 정체가 바뀐 거를 제 눈으로 직접 봤기 때문에 그 이후로 제가 환자를 보는 눈이 달라졌어요. 사람한테 제일 필요한 게 무엇인가 그거를 진짜 안다면 은 복음 전할 수밖에 없어요. 
미국 여러 병원 시스템들을 보게 되었는데 정말로 짜임새 있고 전문성 있게 잘 기계처럼 돌아가게 만들어놨는데 진짜 이렇게 영원 치유하는 것만 할수 없도록 시스템을 너무 체계적으로 잘 만들어놨어요. 저는 이제 그래서 치유센터가 꼭 병원에 있어야 된다라고 그때부터 마음을 가지고 어 지금까지 인도를 받고 있습니다. 이장로는 2년 전부터 가정의학 클리닉을 운영하고 있습니다. 2015년에는 보금적인 치유센터의 모델을 세우려고 리폼 24라는 가정의학 클리닉을 그때 시작을 했고요. 2년쯤 전에는 이제 의료 상담을 주로 하다가 목요일 오후에 3시간 정도를 치유 상담을 하는 치유 다락방을 하고 있습니다. 복음을 통해서 참된 인간을 회복하고 이 분들이 자신의 정체성과 소명 확인하도록 개인 상담을 하고 있는데 정말로 의료 쪽으로는 약으로도 잘안될 만한 분들이 오셔서 안정 찾고 그런 부분들이 많이 개선이 되고 또 집을 오픈해 랩런트들을 살리고 있습니다. 지금은 우리 유치부 초등부 중고등부 아이들이 훈련 받고 또 매달마다 합숙도 하는 집으로 수임 받고 있고요. 청소년 치유를 두고 기도하고 있었는데 또 정말로 시달리던 한 대학생과 몇 개월 같이 살게 되었어요. 근데 우리 와이프랑 팀을 이루어서 이제는 이제 전도 팀이 되는 또 인도도 받았습니다. 오히려 그런 문제를 통해서 자기는 전도자의 응답 받고 싶다고 하는 분들이 한두 명씩 계속 생겨나서 저는 많은 응답을 받았고요. 미국과 세계 이런 치유센터를 세우는 것이 비전이고요. 앞으로 복음적 치유라는 어떤 성경적인 패러다임을 정리를 해서 어, 복음적인 치유의 시스템적인 이제 틀을 확립하는 것에 쓰임을 받고 싶고 많은 랩런트들이 그 발판 위에서 시스템 위에서 뛰어다닐 수 있고 같이 합력하여서 원네스하여서 어, 우리 하나님이 주시는 시대 사명을 감당하도록 기도를 하고 있습니다. Um, so let me describe who I am, and I, I'm a husband. I have a father of three children. You can see the photo right here, uh, Christine, Evangeline, Mason. Um, and I'm also an elder uh, of Emmanuel Church of Southern California. I'm a family physician, um, doctor of osteopathy, graduated from Kirksville College in uh, Missouri. I, I used to live in Missouri. Now I'm in LA. Um, to be exact, it's in Whittier. Um, and my practice is in Garden Grove. Um, I, am, I run my own private uh, practice called Reform 24 Medical Group, and I also work at Kaiser Permanente. You, you really don't need to know all about this, um, but I just wanted to share with you because some people ask. Uh, Remnant Medical Club of America is, um, you saw some of the photos in the, in the video, but um, every year um, when, the, when there's RCA, we run the first aid and then a um, lot of um, doc doctors, uh, pre-meds and um, pharmacists and nurses, you know, we, we come down, you know, to really help you guys and, and make sure that there's nothing serious going on in RCA. Um, and then I started that um, very uh, first, uh, first aid in RCA. And also formed the Remnant Medical Club of America as a president. Um, if you guys have any, um, uh, if you're thinking about going into health healthcare, just uh, please let me know or any of us so that we can guide you. Uh, I'm also president for YBOM North America. So um, maybe you guys know me personally. Maybe you have met me before, saw me, um, and I'm you know I'm not a I'm really a personal person, so if you see me any any time, uh, you can email me, chat, chat with me anytime. Okay, um, I have uh, my cacao cacao talk is open. I'm gonna share that with you later. Um, but um, if I, um, you know, if you want to know more about uh, the ministry I do uh, or the the walk that I walk as a remnant, 
um, you know, please uh, let me know. Um, I wanted to get into some questions that I, I really, um, a lot of actual remnants ask me all the time, um, just to begin with, um, as because we need to talk about the healing, uh, not just the uh, concept, but then again, the um, application of it in the real world. Um, a lot of questions, you know, a lot of remnants actually asked me, it, Dr. Lee, is um, evangelism possible in the hospital? Why do you think? Um, this is, you know, a lot of kids actually asked me uh, who actually think, who are thinking about going into medical field in the first place. They, this is the first question they asked me. 전도 진짜로 할수 있어요? 전도하면은 문제 안 생겨요? They, they asked me if there is no problem with me when I get to evangelize. I, I think this is, um, the question comes because the, a lot of remnants haven't seen a model um, you know, have you read a book about doctor evangelizing in the hospital? Or have, have you seen anyone like a healthcare professional is doing it actually in, in America? Because in Korea, it's actually, uh, there, there's not a lot of uh, societal pressure against evangelism in the hospital setting, but in America, there, there are. So, um, but to me, it, this is nonsensical question because um, I am an evangelist when I'm in hospital. Um, I see it, see it through evangelist eyes and then God opens a door for me. Um, so, you know, never in my life, I really had, uh, encountered any problem with the patients with uh, when I talk about, you know, very deep, deep question that they need to have an answer for. Um, and then, you know, I, I bring it up a lot of time and, um, um, there are like close to 100, 200 patients actually accepted Christ through me uh, in the hospital setting, even when I was in medical school, it, you know, so it's, it's not a, it's, I mean, you know, you, you can evangelize. That's what I want to <laughs> talk about. Um, and then the question is, how do you evangelize as a, pro a healthcare professional? And then I think that's a connected question. Um, and uh, how do you become a doctor who actually heals instead of giving pills? Um, and uh, you know these are real questions who are who comes from concerning remnants. So um, I want to deal with that. There uh, was a there was actually a remnant who asked me, "Is the world evangelism even possible?" And you know you might not even actually uh, think deeply about it, but some remnant actually did and asked me. Uh, I was a deacon then, and she asked me, like, is word of any reason possible? I, and she ca actually came down to the conclusion that it's not. So I said, yeah, like, because uh, the way she, she saw was, you know, Tarapang movement is like solely the only gospel movement, only evangelism movement right now. And then the way she sees it, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, it's not as big as she thought it would be. So, um, and, and the rate of people populating on earth and, and all, also it just didn't match. So I said, like, you know, I simply said, yeah, because God said so. I mean, he's going to do it, right? And then she never thought it that way. And the next next morning she came back and, uh, and then and like with tearful eyes and she cried all night. She never thought it that way. Uh, yeah, word event is impossible because God wants to and then God promised so. Um, so, you know, I, I think um, when when it comes, you know, I know you guys hear a lot of messages, uh, but then again, when it comes down to actually up, applying it into your life and also in your field, it, it's a whole different matter. Um, and then I, you know, I'm standing here as a person who had been doing it for the past 20 years as a doctor um, and as a, as a remnant. So this is a really important question. So um, there are the promises of healing in the Bible. Um, Matthew chapter 8, 14 to 17, when Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw uh, Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. Uh, back then, having a fever is really a big deal. And so he touched her hand and the fever left her. So, you know, it's a life or death situation, but she suddenly got up and she came into a you know, full health, uh, began to wait on him and with uh, the, you know, sound mind. 
So he he healed her, uh, you know, physical problem and the mental problem as well. When evening came, many were who were demon possessed were brought to him, and he drew about the spirits through word and healed all the sick. Um, so Jesus actually did spiritual healing as well. Um, you see, uh, Jesus' healing in the Bible is very much of a whole person healing. It's not just um, just the body, even pills. It's not just the counseling, but it, basically he delivered people out of the darkness. Um, he showed them the light, who the, what the light is. Um, many who are demon possessed were healed. Um, so the same type of healing can happen in your personal life and also other people's life. Um, and, uh, you know, I personally run a um, healing program with my patients and, um, you know, Korean patient, uh, you know, with the uh, Asian ethnicity, they don't like to take pills. Um, and even when people come in with like a serious depression, they don't like to take pills. Like I, I, after I tried that before, and then it just makes me feel weird. I don't want to take it anymore. I feel like really uh, uh, more of a sick person, mentally ill. I don't want to feel like that. So um, um, many Koreans or Japanese or whatnot, they don't like, to, they don't like to do that. So what's, what's the option? Should I send them to psychiatry? Because they don't like to go to psychiatry either, unless like serious, serious problem happens. They have to end up in the hospital or something. Then they, they may be. Yeah, very, very difficult. Um, so I said, yeah, I'm going to invite you to my counseling sessions. Why don't you come? Right they are like, do you do counseling too? Yeah, I, <laughs> I guess I saw. <laughs> um, they say, I, I call it a healing program because I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, so they understand that. They come and then we talk about, I, I, I get to listen to what their life, life is all about, uh, about an hour. Um, and then I learn about them. Um, and after then, I start my healing tarakbang with them. So uh, um, I, I use a um, gospel letter. And after the gospel letter, uh, I go to the new life, new, new living. So, um, and I found out that there is a lot of, uh, there's fundamental healing that come when we do gospel letter. And you ask, um, it isn't like a Bible study, right? But they don't they don't think it's a Bible study. They get, they think it's healing because I explained to them that you know they, uh, yeah you you are human. You are not an animal. You are, um, you know you you don't just have body. You don't just have brain, but you have spirit, and. Uh, as it just says, uh, your body can have problem, your your mind can have a problem, your spirit can have a problem, like you can have a spiritual problem. So uh, we, we got to deal with that. Um, so when I try to explain to them uh, as a doctor, uh, coming from a doctor, people understand that. And uh, many people who who had no help at all um, were very sick. And then after getting through, you know, the gospel letter with me, they actually heal. Um, so maybe I, I should bring up a um, few examples. We are not a veterinarian. I'm not a veterinarian. You're not a just a, the trainer, um, but you are a, a doctor. You are a, a teacher of a person. You know, you don't, you know, we don't, we don't treat animals here, right? I actually talk, talked about this um, in my medical, uh, medical mission. At, um, Cambodia. I met several medical students and they were invited to the medical school there in Cambodia. And I, I spoke uh, with the uh, um, medical students that uh, you guys are really not like, do you want to be a veterinarian? Then yeah, go to veterinary school. But you're in a medical school. So then you're treating a human, human right? Um, the funny thing is when, when I received training in my medical school, I felt like I was being trained as a uh, car mechanic, right? Um, but my, my medical school is a little different. I'm a DO. So we had an emphasis on, uh, on the spirit and mind body as well. Um, but then again, most people, most uh, doctors, you know, they just go through training without actually thinking about what, who we are, like what human is, what a man is. So um, this 
critically important when you're treating a person. Like, you know, if you're thinking about this, this applies to your own relationship with another person as well. Like if you're in a, in a married relationship, um, you want to respect another person as an image of God and then not like rule over them um, and make pre, you know, determination ahead of them. You got to give them some, some time to have, have their own time with God and then come to a conclusion rather than you just forcing everything. Like say, okay, well, let's, let's do this because I think this is right, right? So um, the same thing happens with me and my patient. Um, you know, the, our relationship is um, me as a person connected to God. I'm an image of God. And the other person is an image of God too. I has an image of God. So I really respect their choices. I respect, uh, I, I try to give them time. Uh, I don't come to a conclusion like, right away i try to explain to people right um so the concept of um image of god is very important in in the practicality uh, as as a physician and so do you like you know you see a, you, you may see a another uh, you know uh, students around you um in your school or like in your field of practice you know you, you just want to uh, you just want to um, you want to see them not as a as just an animal like you know their image of god distorted image of god that is but then again you know still very image of god you know america is in crisis i think because uh when you look at the the news there are a lot of issues i just brought out like you know some of the uh, issues that are uh, that are on the news um, there are a lot of things that are not on the news anymore, but um, right, right, the uh, upper corner there, there are. You see, just uh, people up there that are not homeless; they're actually uh, people who are uh, who are doing drugs. Uh, this very famous, um, uh, very famous uh, street in um, Philadelphia, yeah, where um, it's called the Walmart of heroin, uh, called Kensington Avenue. Um, it's like a large, like open air, open air narcotic market for heroin in the East Coast, right? Uh, you know, I saw on YouTube, um, the YouTuber goes like 20, 30 minutes, and then what well, everything he does is basically he takes the whole street. But then again, this is what you see for 20, 30 minutes, right? So I was like, I was like, what? What is this? Where is this place? Is it the United States? Yeah, it is the United States. Uh, 75,000 residents there are addicted to heroin or any other like op opioids, they say. And then, you know, just a uh, few years ago, like, you know, every year, a few hundred people die at, uh, at a fatal overdose there, right? It's This is ha actually happening in America. Um, you know, you, you compare it to Korea, I, I used to live in Korea until when I was 16, and you don't see something like this at all. Like, you know, um, and then how about like, you know, somebody doing Christmas rampage just a few days ago, somebody just drove um, SUV and then plowed into like Wisconsin parade, parade killed 20, uh, 12 people. Okay, five people and they injured like 40 something people, right? Um, so you don't see something like this in Korea, but you see it in America. Like um, in the, the left uh, lower side, you see like 13, 14 year old um, planning for um, like Columbine style shooting attack, mass guns, ammunitions, and knives, and you know they were planning for that too. You see it in the news? Have you seen it? Um, America is in deep crisis. Um, I, you know, if I were you, I probably won't, wouldn't look at the media at this moment, you know, because they're not interested in in these. Right. Um, they don't want to look at what the actual problem is. Um, they don't even like a lot of uh, media nowadays. They're very op opinionated. They don't even speak the facts anymore. They just omit facts, even right, right wing or left wing. They do that. You know, um, you got to have a factual eyes. America is in deep crisis. Um, you know, mental health of American children is at crisis point, they say, um, just by COVID. Uh, Initially, when COVID happened, pandemic happened, they said, you know, it's going to be okay. And then 
later on the road, we found that like 24% of children aged five to 11, they you know started more coming more to the emergency room because of mental health crisis. Um, you're talking about very young children, five to 11 year old, um, and and so on. And um, we found that like you know in the Korean here in LA, uh, a lot of people are committing suicide. We are the uh, top number one in ethnicities. Um, do you, can you understand this guy? Like Las Vegas shooting, 59 people killed and more than 500 people hurt. He, we still don't know what the reason is, why he went on a, sh a shooting spree, but none of this happens in other places. This happens in America and you live in America, right? And I happen to be doing a, uh, I happen to be um, serving people in, uh, who are going through mental crisis or or physical problems and so on as a doctor. So I, I, I am in the field and I, I get to see a lot of this uh, in my practice. People may not even tell about it, but they may be in very deep depression and so on, but they tell me. Um, so what's the problem? Why do you think it's a problem? Like, you know, 13, 14 year old getting very angry and then wants, wants to kill everyone in the school, right? What's the problem? Do you think the drug is a problem or race is a problem, even guns a problem? What is a problem? Because we are dealing with um, America in the world, we are dealing with a human problem. Ephesians chapter two, verse one to two, as for you, you were dead in uh, your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the, of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. People have spiritual problems. Uh, people have uh, people the way people live in this world is is basically you're captive uh, in our sin and transgressions and following the ways of the world under the uh, Satan who is in disguise we are talking about a problem of a person um, so you know um, in many different parts of the world uh, this comes in a it manifests as a different fashion, but um, about you know this happens a lot now. I I, I um, but I was like back back in twenty years ago, I was shocked when I read a newspaper about um thirteen year old um committing suicide in Korea. Um, she jumped out of the roof uh, top, from top uh, top building, and then she jumped uh outside, and then the, the I read an article. This article was mentioning all this different possibility for suicide, but um, but there was no factor, right? Um, mentioned about like, you know, they were asking if the parents were too, uh, like there was a violence in the family? No, is there, is there was a problem in the school? No, like she was a very, very good person. There was no, no bullying around at all. The patient, uh, the, I mean, the, the parents didn't actually force her to study. What's the problem? Um, um, and then I came down to a conclusion, yeah, people don't know, but it's a problem of hers, and, right? She was, I think she, as a 13 year old, was very, very smart person to understand the world, uh, how the parents were living, how the world is going on like that. And then she probably felt like there was no happiness in the world. Um, she may have gotten to some, like, uh, something that just, plot into her mind and she couldn't escape. And then she said like, there is no happiness in the world, right? But definitely she had a spiritual problem at the end. So we are dealing with a problem of a person. How do you tackle that? And then what is our solution to that, right? So, um, you know, Satan um, from the get-go um, came down to human, uh, said, just do it. Even if it means sacrificing the whole whole humanity, just go ahead and do it. Right? What did they do? They broke the law. They broke uh, broke God's covenant, and then decided to leave God by trying to be their own God. Um, somebody calls this God complex. People have um, people have um, nowadays live in sin. Uh, they think they want to control everything, right? Um, and then Satan is in the back. Like, just do it. You guys might have um, received that kind of um, 
framework, of, um, like education in the framework of thoughts, right? That you are supposed to make the difference in the world, that you are supposed to do, do everything to make, you know, make sure that you survive and, and, and so on. Um, but it's uh, simply not true. We were created to live in happiness with God. What is healing? What is healing? Um, it, so you need, to, you need to come to correct diagnosis. Only then correct healing can begin in order. Just as uh, third, uh, Book of John, uh, third John, chapter one, two, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well, right? Bible specifically mentioned that we need a spiritual help. <clears throat> to me, um, what we all need to enjoy is restoration of our soul in Christ um, and have the time of healing for every, uh, every one of us. You know, happy Thanksgiving, all you guys. Right, <laughs> right. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, do you know what we should be very thankful for? Uh, for our, uh, our our salvation, right? How do you enjoy our salvation? Let's let's read the Bible verse here. First Thessalonians chapter five. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Yeah, you are to live together with Jesus Christ, right? God didn't want to condemn you, but he rescued you so that you can be with Jesus all the time. So that's why we rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. To me, this is a remnant time. To me, this is uh, Acts chapter 1, 1, right? Salvation is the beginning of true healing. Um, I explained to my patients uh, that True healing doesn't happen until you meet God. You may you may try to you may try to struggle to find out why. You may try to try to go do all these medication, but then again, true healing only begins when you meet God. Um, and we can meet God through through His Son, and with that we can rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Um, what God, when God recreates you and I, um, then with the Emmanuel, everything has changed. We have new identity. So if a problem comes, it's fine. You know, um, Remnants asked me, how to evangelize? Um, this comes first. Evangelism is actually the secondary. Why? Uh, because those people who know this true, the way um, God brings the work of evangelism to them, your your life will be consummated with a thought of evangelism in your life because you have real stuff, real thing, and you can you are enjoying the real stuff. Um, this is very personal, but I wanted to share with you. Um, few few months ago, my my son, uh, seven year old. Mason, he, he got diagnosed with a cancer, right? He has a cancer on his chest uh, cavity, uh, on his ribs. And then now he's going through a um, chemotherapy, right? A lot of people have been praying for me um, and with, you know, give, 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 giving support and to my family. I'm really thankful. Um, but, you know, the thing is, the first few days, I didn't know what to think, but uh, after about a day later, God gave me his words um, from the pulpit, from the prayer journal, um, and defined what his situation is. So when God defines it, and again, you know, he says, uh, Mason is going through a wilderness, and but that wilderness has an end. He's going to go into, we're all going to go into uh, the Canaan. So because we are going to Canaan, um, the, the wilderness has a meaning, right? He's giving us the, uh, the training period because we are going to go into Canaan. Or else, why, why do we need training? You know? um, so, and then he also 
gave gave us the word on J John chapter nine about a blind person being healed by Jesus Christ and became a true uh, evangelist after seeing you know seeing the light. I, I I spoke with Mason the other day about three uh, about a week ago. I asked him, "Hey Mason, um, you know God, uh, we we talk we tell you and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the solver of all our problems, right?" But you have problems. What do you think? <laughs> so I was going to talk to him about the important thing, but do you know what he said? It's truly a remnant. He said, um, Dad, Abraham had problem too, he said. Um, and uh, the reason Abraham had problem was because God wanted to show him who he is and for him to know that Jesus is the Christ. And God gave me problem so that I know that he is God and Jesus is a Christ and that I'll become a, a witness for the world, he said. You know, what is problem, guys? Is, is that a too big of a problem? Um, whatever you're facing right now, um, I think I think my son has a Probably the biggest problem right now. <laughs> he can he can probably go probably go anywhere and say, okay, did you, did you have a cancer? Like you know, I have a cancer right now, and I get I get the I get poked with the injection every day. <laughs> he can he can trump every one of you. <laughs> and you're right. <laughs> but um, what is the problem? What is the problem? When God is with you, when God uh, recreated you. Um, in Christ. And if Christ is with you, you can rejoice always. You can pray continually. What is the problem? You can give thanks to God because you know the answer. Right? Your life is taken care of. You have eternal security. You have eternal life. So um, you, you truly need to be thankful because what we have, the world doesn't have. What we have is a word, wor world that lacks us. Uh, lacks, uh, did I say it right? Um, they need healing. What do you enjoy? I don't know. Like, you know, do you enjoy that God is with you? Do you know what that actually means? You got to find that out. Christ is with you. That's like so wonderful thing. Yeah, you, you can trump everything. You can heal everyone. Satan, no problem. Um, what is man? Fundamental principle of creation. Do you know that? What is man's problem? Genesis chapter 3, original sin. Do you know that? What is the solution? God's method, Christ. Do you know it? Yeah. Um, enjoying this is should be our daily life. This is why I evangelize, because um, it's not about sharing the gospel. I don't like the word sharing the gospel because <laughs> we are to proclaim the gospel to the world. We're the light. We don't just share. <laughs> I don't know where the, and then the word comes from, <laughs> sharing, the, sharing the, uh, the gospel. You guys are the light, right? You, I mean, when you go uh, to the world, like you, you, you're shining because God is with you. The kingdom of God moves. You got, you got the background of heaven. Um, you know, um, I think remnant time means um, having a deep realization of the spiritual fact that you, you have right now as a child of God and to have a deep confidence in it and deep, deep assurance of it. Because right now the world needs uh, true healing, right? They need to meet God. People need to meet God. Um, um, and needs to, when they meet God, finally, as a newborn baby, you know, the word of God needs to sink in, imprint, root nature changes. And then they, they start to enjoy that prayer, uh, 24 prayer with God, right? Just like Mason is enjoying right now. He's actually in the hospital right now, CHLA. He, uh, he's probably getting his, uh, the first of his, uh, his chemo. Um, it's, just, it's all a seven week. Um, but he's like chilling, right? No problem. <laughs> um, he prays to God and the other day, Dad, God gave me, 
God gave me um, courage. God gave me courage. Yeah, great, Mason. And then he got the injection right away. <laughs> we didn't have to do a mock trial. Um, let's do it. Um, deep breathing, right? Why do we talk about deep breathing? Because it sustains our focus. Um, your body, mind, and spirit, you can focus our attention to God uh, in deep meditation of God's word um, and then enjoying who we are in Christ. Um, and then you get into the flow of evangelism, uh, enjoying the evidence of God with us. Um, why do you feel your head? Right? A lot of my patients are filled with something of the world, right? It's not God given. They're, they're filled out their, their, their mind and their heart with something that is not from God. Uh, what are you filling your head with? Uh, that might be your priorities in life, right? Do you feel your we're bringing with God given, heavenly stuff, recreated thing? Uh, if people of God, if the children of God, if the remnants uh, feel their mind, heart, and, and their soul with the things of God, you can embrace the world, not give into the world, or not. Um, not avoid the world, but you can, um, you know, take them, embrace them, and then transcend. Then you can heal the world. Okay. So, I mean, we, we say like, you know, um, hold on to the covenant, right? Believe that Jesus is Christ. Um, Simply belief, right? You don't need to believe really hard. You don't need to believe, like, try to believe. Just simply believe. Uh, have a time of faith. Uh, John chapter 14, 1 to 4. Do not let your heart be troubled. Um, you know, you, you believe in God, right? Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. Believe in that. If there are not uh, so, they, what I have told you, he will probably told you that. I'm going there to... Uh, prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to, with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And then disciples asked him, what's the way? We don't know the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right? You guys simply have a faith. Faith in Christ. Um, you know, if you um if you have a sense that you know your your past scars or current situations are are just dragging you down or if you really are unsure about the future and then you have anxiety about it right you got to reform right um and the, the same thing you got to heal from your scars from the unbelief and have a healing for purpose in your life right all this is given through Christ, when you simply believe in him. Jesus says, don't worry. Do not let your heart be troubled. That means don't worry. Um, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You know, enjoy this and then you can relate this to your patients. Relate this to your friends. Hey, you're, you know, you have a nightmare every day. You're doing drugs. How much? How much? <laughs> how much drugs are you doing? Like what kind? You can ask them. You know, they they probably want somebody to listen to them. Why do you do that? Because probably your friends are having issues in the, in in his home or her home. Right? Do you have you met God? Do you need? You really need to meet God. It's as simple as that. You want to be reborn? You want to start again? There's a way. How do you pray? How do you guys pray? Um, in order to heal the world, in order to heal the people around you, you need to have remnant time. Um, a lot of people actually have um, misunderstanding about deeper. I actually talk about this to, um, 
to <laughs> to my patients. Um, how, like, you know, in order to receive God's sense, finally receive God's answer, it's like, how should you pray? Like, do you guys need think that you, you should pray like far on the left, putting your really, really heavy effort down, or really, really sincerely, like, cry so much, or like, really loud, like the little, little, little kid? Maybe you feel like, you know, Satan, go away, like, really out loud, but Satan can't hear you. Right, you, sh you, you know, this is how should, you should pray. You should simply pray in Christ's name. That's it. In Christ's name, you will receive God's answer hundred percent time, hundred percent of the time. That's guaranteed. Uh, as a saved person, you have eternal life, and you look for your you live a life looking for spiritual answers, and you'll be led by God, God's Spirit. Only a child of God can enjoy his abundant answers. And you can every day. What is the prayer? It's focusing your attention to Emmanuel. God is with you. What God has accomplished in your life. What Christ has done for your life. How Holy Spirit works in your life. Right? You're, fo you're focusing on that. The heavenly background. Um. You know, that's a key point of nine settings, I think. And when you get so much empowerment from God in this way, uh, you can start to think beyond yourself, beyond yourself and imagine things that you couldn't imagine in the past. CVDIP, right? You can actually put, in, think, put things into practice. It's about having five minutes of the happiest morning in your day. You say, Jesus, you are the Christ. The answer to all my problems. Thank you. You're the way to God. I have more sense. I crush Satan's head. Because of you, God is with me. God leads me. God empowers me. So I will trust in your word, wait upon you, you in prayer, and follow you always. Right? Have a time of rest. Rest. Simply rest and be empowered by God. Breathe in, Holy Spirit. God empower me. The name of Jesus Christ for every problem that you have. And rest and wait. You guys, you guys do this every day. So what I tell people, uh, my patients lately, is in the morning, you know, you should take time to um, have a very thankful time of for what Christ has done for you, um, you know, confess the name of Jesus Christ and reclaim the identity that God gave you. And throughout the day, uh, do this 24 hour Holy Spirit empowerment, Christ, the name of Christ for every, every, every situation, every person that you get to meet, you gotta, you gotta be in here. And then at, and, and during the nighttime, uh, deeply meditate God's message, God's word for you and then have a conclusion there. Um, this is my healing darakbang for many, uh, for many of my patients. That's how my schedule goes. Um, uh, this is, uh, on Wednesday, I have an um, um, healing, healing um, upper room ministry. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they're all online. Oh, Thursday, yeah, Thursday, I actually, actually did it in the, in the clinic. So um, about five to six years ago, I opened my, um, uh, clinic time available for my patients to come on uh, Thursday afternoon and um, uh, typically two to four people actually come and then I get to listen to them on, on Saturday and Friday online um, online Tarakbang opened up after COVID pandemic and um, you know some of our uh, multiple people come in to receive the message uh, and then go through the Pogun Pyeonji Gospel letter, um, you know, and you see the Samyangja guide right there. It's a um, message for the community worker. So um, this, um, there's an American uh, uh, nurse, used to be a nurse, and then she and her mother comes, and then she has been doing Tarakbang with me for about a year now, and then she wants to do evangelism practically in her life. So, um, you know, we started doing, and then, um, the Wednesday Wednesday online meeting 
opened up because of um, this person and and that, that that person that she invited accepted Christ with the, the Catholic background and all. So, um, so I just wanted to show you what I do. Um, and then practical healing actually happens here and then they're receiving so many graces. Now, um, if, uh, I mean, I, uh, I have some pre-med students uh, who, who I, I said, you know, you should come and see what I do. And then so they participate in online um, Tarapa meeting too. Maybe some of these can open up like publicly um, and maybe you guys can come in too. I don't know, that's a thought. But I, I really want remnants to see um, um, active evangelism happening in the field, active healing in the field so that you may do it later, right? Uh, there are a lot of people who, who I'm praying for uh, right down there. Conclusion. Um, my CVDIP journey, um, you know, if you, any, any of you wants to be a healer in the field um, and really wants to do that, keep praying, keep praying. Because if your heart is in there, God will show you, God will, God will guide you. You know, have an evangelist uh, set of mind. Okay. Um, you got to be a person that connects with God in the field, have a personal healing time. And, you know, think beyond yourself. You don't need to be limited to your own thinking. When I was in, uh, when I got into uh, medical school, the, the interview question was, what, what's the five priorities in life? And then the interviewer asked me that, and then wanted to wanted me to uh, honestly answer that. I said, the first thing in my mind is to be a, uh, be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That was my medical school interview question. And the second thing was, I want to build a healing center. Um, and I, I want to build a uh, remnant. I mean, I didn't say remnant, but the, I want to build a uh, <laughs> uh, medical club in all United States uh, who, uh, with the people who wants to do gospel movement with me. And then, so those were my priorities uh, just came up, right? Because they, they were really my priorities. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to build a uh, healing center in all the world at the time, which is beyond me. I mean, you really think about it. Word evangelism is beyond you. <laughs> like, you know, 237, 5,000 groups that are beyond you. But why can't we actually pray about it and then think about it and real stuff like in, in reality in, in our head? It's because God is with us and he, he promised it to us. So, you know, no problem. Just keep thinking about it. Um, and organize your message. This is uh, this was the um, given to me by one cool remnant in Philippines, and um, she said I was praying for a healing center, and then she did too, and then she sent it to me like this is her in her mind that's a healing center uh, should what healing center should be in the Philippines, and she's a designer, so she actually designed it uh, for me. So anyway, yeah, you, know, you guys do that too, like you know. You gotta heal the world. It doesn't have to be a, a humongous center like this, but then again, it can start with where you are at. Um, healing in every home, because we got the stuff that we're, we're all these. Double portion of thy spirit upon me. Um, ask that to God, and God will give it to you, and then He will fill you. Matthew chapter six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything will be added to you. Well, my time is done. Um, there are hundred of you. Um, I'm really glad to meet you, and I want to meet you in person later. Uh, say hi, and then I'll see you guys. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Bye bye.